Jerry at Fair Oaks. Hurry, Red, he's sinking. Hurry up, Captain Rowland. Grab him. Grab his arm. Dying down for him, Morrison. He's got him. He just managed to grab his arm, Captain. Here, Morrison. Grab this lifeline. Can you make it? Yes, sir. Here, Phillips. Dugan, take this line and pull him in. I'll help him at the ladder. Yes, sir. Come on, Jerry. Pull it steady. Okay. Can you boost him up a little, Morrison? Just get him closer to the ladder. Has Red got hold of the ladder? Yes, okay, Jerry. Quit pulling now. Okay. I just got him in time. Just a little higher, Morrison. There. That's it. Now we can get him. Grab his arm, Phillips. Yes, sir. You help too, Dugan. Yes, sir. Have you got him now? Yes. Okay. Can you get up on us? Yes, sir. I'm all right. Here, take my hand, Red. There you are. Ah, there. Thanks, Jerry. Let's lay him down right here, Phillips. Yes, sir. On his stomach. That's right. Uh, is he all right, Captain? He'll come around all right. Here, let me get him on his stomach. There. Now, you boys start patting his legs and right arm while I get his tongue out and start in on the good old shaper man. Yes, Captain. He's coming too, sir. Yes, he'll rally. He had a close call, though. You're all right, Linwell. Just relax. I've got my wind now, Captain. Can I give you a hand here? Yes, in just a minute now. You can help me carry Harold up to the boathouse. We'll have to get these wet clothes off him. Help. Help me. <laughs> quiet, quiet now. Just relax and take it easy. You're all right. He sure had a close call, didn't he, Jerry? Well, I'll say he did. He was going down for the third time. That was sure a keen rescue, Red. Ah, uh, that was nothing. Did you save me, Red? Oh, oh sure. I, I remember now. Thanks. Want to try sitting up now, Harold? Yes, sir. I'm all right now, but I sure feel shaky. Uh, what do you say we get over to the boathouse now and get out of that wet uniform? There's some swimming trunks in one of the lockers that'll fit you. Can't I just sit here a while, Captain? Oh, so you don't feel so good, huh? Well, I'm sort of tired. I and... <laughs> think you would be. But come along now. Good hot shower and a brisk rub down will put you in the running again. I'll help you over there. We've got to get those wet clothes off. Uh, is there anything we can do now, Captain? Uh, yes, Phillips. You might go tell Mrs. Gardner what happened and have her come down to the boathouse. Have her bring some dry clothes for Harold, too. Yes, sir, right away. Come on, Jerry. Okay. So long, Harold. See you after a while. Goodbye, Captain. So long, Jerry. Goodbye, Dugan. Hurry it up, Phillips. Yes, sir. I'll bet Harold's not over that narrow escape yet. Mm, I'll say he's not. Did you notice how funny he looked? I mean, he had such a funny color. Yeah, and his lips were purple, too. Yeah, I'll bet he won't be going out on the pier again in a hurry. You warned him he was too close to the edge. Yes, but I guess he just didn't think. Hey, maybe it'd be a good idea to have him go see the doctor. Well, chances are Captain Roland will send him over to the infirmary. The infirmary? Yes, that's the hospital. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, say, you haven't met Dr. Campbell yet, have you? No, and here's open I don't. Why? He's awfully nice. You'll like the doctor. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I meant, let's hope I don't have to go see him because I'm hurt or something like that. Oh, no, that wouldn't be so good, would it? <laughs> I'll say not. <laughs> well, Jerry, did you ever get hurt in a circus? 
You know, I should think it would be pretty hard not to get banged up with so much excitement going on all the time. Well, it's a funny thing, but I never once had to go see the doctor. Oh, I had a couple of close calls, but I guess I'm just lucky. What were the close calls? Well, once when I was riding Splendor, that's the little colt I told you I used to ride. Mm, yes, I remember. Well, once when I first started to ride him, I got his saddle on too loose and it slipped. That sort of scared him, and boy, did he go. Oh, and you fell off, huh? No, that's just it. That would have been easy, because Splendor was still a pretty small horse. But I slipped with a saddle and hung on. My head almost touched the ground, and his hoofs went flying by me a mile a minute. Mm, I don't see how you ever got out of that. I was scared. If I let go, I'd get kicked in the head. No, I should think. What happened? Well, a fella just happened to be walking across the lot in back of the horse top just at that same time, and he ran out and grabbed Splendor and stopped him. Mm, you said something when you said you were lucky. Hey, look, there's Ted Metcalf. Where? There, sitting on the steps of Custis Hall. Oh, yeah, I see him there. Whew. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Just getting winded is all. Oh. We've been walking pretty fast. Oh, you're sure it wasn't the talking that got you winded? Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Ted. Hiya, Ted. Oh, looks like you two are in a hurry. Uh -huh. Yeah, we are. Oh, Jerry, you and Ted wait here, will you? I'll run in and give Mrs. Gardner Captain Rowland's message. Okay. Excuse me, Ted. I'll be right out. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's all the excitement, Jerry? Harold Linwell just fell in the lake. No. Yes, he did. He nearly drowned, too. Oh, is he all right now? Well, I guess so. You guess so? What do you mean? Well, he's kind of weak yet. Well, uh, how did it happen, Jerry? Oh, he was standing too close to the end of the pier, and he just fell in. Well, who saved him? Red Morrison. Red? Uh-huh. He dove right in with his uniform on. It sure was tough for him to swim, too. Well, I, I can imagine it would be, being weighted down with wet clothes. He had an awful hard time, but he finally got Harold. Say, that speaks pretty well for Morrison. Well, I'll say it does. Well, that's that. Huh? Oh, so soon? Mm-hmm. I met Mrs. Gardner in the hallway. Say, I don't think there's any use going back to the lake, do you? No, I guess not. There's nothing we can do to help. Jerry was just telling me all about it. I guess our friend Red Morrison did himself proud. Well, I call it a mean trick. What on earth are you talking about? Say, what do you say we take a walk over to Mac's place? Okay. I could go for a cold drink. <laughs> I could, too. Come on. Hey, but what's that you said about a mean trick, Lee? Well, I meant the way Red dove in and got to Harold first. Well, what do you mean, Lee? You mean to tell me you didn't notice the way he stole your thunder? Stole my thunder? Certainly. You were just about to take your shoes off and go in after Harold when he handed you his cap and dove right in. Well, that was all right. There was no time to lose. Well, I don't know that I agree with you, Jerry. Now, I contend that if you'd taken your shoes and blouse off and gone in after Harold, well, you could have rescued him faster than Red did with his wet clothes weighting him down. Poor little Harold went down for the third time, just as Red grabbed him. But just as Jerry said, there was no time to lose. I think Red did the right thing. Why, sure. Anyway, it doesn't make any difference who saved him, just as long as he was saved. Yes, that's the way I look at it. Well, just the same. I think Red beat Jerry to it for a purpose. He knows Captain Rowland will take it up at an officer's meeting, and naturally, oh, that'll make... Oh, I see. And that means that... Red might be reinstated as a cadet officer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me he wasn't thinking of that. Why, he didn't have time to think. It all happened so fast. Well, I wouldn't be too hasty to judge Red if I were you, Lee. Well, that's the way I feel about it, and I can't help it. Well, I'm not sticking up for what Red's done in the past. Don't get me wrong, but I do believe in giving credit where credit is due. You know, maybe he's changed. <laughs> all right, I won't say any more about it. But let me tell you something. Oh, there goes Captain Lockhart. I wanted to see him for a minute. Well, I'll see you at Max later on. All right. Okay. See you later, Dad. I thought you noticed that, Jerry. You were ready and willing and, I think, wise in wanting to take your shoes off. Oh, well, I don't care. I oh, know, but it isn't that. It's the principle of the thing. If he gets his commission back, it really isn't fair. Well, if anything, you should have been allowed to do what you set out to do. I mean, it, it's you that deserves the reward. Well, there's nothing we can do about it, so let's forget it. Uh-oh, look out, look out, look out. The big arch for you, plebe. Whoa, oh, I started right for the little one. <laughs> You'll have to be a little more careful, Cadet Dugan. Yes, I will, Cadet Phillips. I'm very sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Lee, who was that man that just came out of Mac's place? Hmm, never seen him before. Not many grown-ups go into Mac's place, do they? Mm -hmm, just a few. Well, here we are. Go ahead, Jerry. Okay. Hiya, Mac. How's things, Mac? Oh, fine, fine. Couldn't it be better? No, no couldn't. Go <laughs> on, you always say that. Well, why not? Uh, there's an old saying and a true one. A man without a smiling face and a cheerful word must not open a shop. Uh, I, I think that's an old uh, Chinese saying. <laughs> Chinese. It's a good one, all right. Oh, you bet it is. Uh, it's, uh, it's not wise to complain to your customers. 
I always see things are good, and I like to invite them to be that way. Oh, say, Mac, mm -hmm. who was that man that just came out of here? I don't think I've ever seen him around Fair Oaks before. Well, no, <clears throat> Lee, I, I, I'm glad you asked me about him, as long as you two are in on my secret. Hmm? Your secret? Why, why, Jerry, why, oh, gosh, lad, you, you haven't have forgotten about my invention already. Oh, no, I see what you mean. Well, uh, what about that man, Mac? Well, uh, now, that man you just saw walk out of here is, is going to let me have the money to build a working model of my altimeter. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's uh, very, very much interested. But who is he? Well, uh, his name is Russell. Clyde Russell. Good Scotch name. Yeah, he's more or less a stranger in Fair Oaks. Well, didn't you know him before? Oh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, not until just about an hour ago when he came in here to get a bite of lunch. Hmm. Sounds kind of funny to me. Uh, Funny? What, what, what's funny about meeting up with a person? No, no, no. I mean a stranger like that offering you money. Oh, well, well, he's, uh, he's interested in inventions. He, he told me he's helped a lot of folks get started. Well, that's his uh, business. Oh, he's very, very fair. He's, he's going to draw up a very nice contract. A contract? Well, oh, certainly. And, and for $250, he only wants a 10% a interest in the invention. Yeah, that's a very good deal. I, I told him I'd be glad to offer him more. And, and besides, he's going to take care of all the business. He'll, he'll handle the whole thing himself. Uh, when is he going to give you the money and draw up the contract? Well, maybe tomorrow or maybe the day after. Why? Well, it doesn't sound good to me, Mac. Uh -huh. I've got a hunch he's going to try to trick you, maybe get your invention away from you. Oh, nonsense, lad. Why, you know very well, Jerry, that, that I'm a very good judge of people. Why, this man, Russell, is as honest as the day is long. Mm, you mean he appears to be honest. That's right, Lee. Listen, Mac, you believe in Proverbs. Uh -huh. Did you ever hear this one? Never judge by appearances? Uh, yes, yes, that's true, very true. Then don't be hasty. Please, Mac. Now, Jerry's right. You're so anxious to get the money to build your working model that, well, you don't see this thing the way we do. Don't forget, haste makes waste. Uh, aye, but uh, don't forget either, he who hesitates is lost. Listen, I'm going to try to get the money you need, and I think I can do it. You? You, Jerry Dugan, why, where on earth would you get $250? Well, never mind about that. What I want you to do is to wait until I try. Please don't sign any contract or take any money from anyone until I see what I can do first. Well, but uh, how long do you want me to wait? Oh, just a couple of days. Uh, but I may pass up a golden opportunity. Mm, I don't think so. If this man Russell really wants to help you, you won't mind waiting a few days. Mac. I. I've just got a hunch that you'll be sorry if you take the money from this stranger. Mm -hmm. Promise me you'll wait for just a couple of days. Well, well, all right. I'll, I'll hold off until the uh, day after tomorrow. 